Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Stylosa and in this video, we're going to go over the big Overwatch 2 Season 8 Mid-Season patch. Now, what is massive about this patch is it nerfs Mauga, hopefully, into the absolute abyss so we don't need to play this goddamn hero in every single game else we lose or people just pick him because he's so easy to get value with and I was probably one of those people. Now, get him out of the game, get him nerfed. There are some really funky changes here, though. Anna's bio nade gets nerfed. Like, what? That could be massive. It could also be a bit of an indirect buff to Malga, because, of course, anti-nade was the way to sort of kill him. Now you're going to have less time with anti-nade, but I'll get onto that in a second. Don't worry. Also, we see the return of the Lunar New Year event. I believe it's the Year of the Dragon uh, this year. So uh, that's going to be funky. But Iliari gets buffed. Sojin's Railgun gets buffed. Why? Why, Blizzard? Do you not realize she's one of the best DPS anyway? It's crazy. Anyway, that just feels like the random change of the patch. But I'm rambling. Let's get stuck into this and let's break it all down. So apologies to begin with. This uh, video you're seeing in the background, the gameplay, it's me playing Mauga. Uh, it's the old obscene Mauga, the pre-nerf Mauga. So I apologize if it looks like I'm really good because he's just a broken hero. Because <laughs> I'm not really good. I'm trash. Anyway, let's move on. So Year of the Dragon is back. Now, the big news about this, this is on the 30th of January, by the way is the prop hunt game mode is coming back. So Magic and Mischief will be available on the Lijiang Night Market map. This, I think, guys, was one of the most played uh, modes in the game, like uh, the custom modes that they add. So, and I think they actually alluded to bringing it back in the past. So this is all good news. There's probably a really strong argument for just leaving this in the game. You know, if people want to play it, Blizz, just let them play it. Now, also in this, you're going to get a bunch of new skins. I'll be in the shop for crazy prices, yada, yada, yada. Um, I don't know what the skins are. I think I've seen images of a Mercy skin and stuff like that floating around, but whatever. Um, and you'll be able to play Capture the Flag and Bounty Hunter Blitz, uh, which are coming back, which I believe are modes that have always been in Lunar New Year. So, uh, yeah, that's the uh, event, which will be on the 30th of January. Okay, let's get into this, because this is the Mauga stuff. Because let's just do it. Right, so Mauga... He, everything gets nerfed, right? His damage output, his survivability, his self-heal, his sustain, his ultimate. It's all getting nerfed. This is good, great, banging news. Good job, Blizzard. So, this is what we get. Base health increased from 250 to 300. But wait, but wait, but wait. Base armor decreased from 250 to 300. So, we've got this 50-point redistribution. It's going from armor, but going to health. This is obviously massive because armor is way better than health. If you've got loads of armor, you're not going to take as much damage. So if you swap the armor out for the health, you're more squishy. You, he's got less armor. That's the way to look at this. More health, less armor. This is better. It means you'll be able to kill him quicker. And this again goes with the whole ethos of trying to give players a window of opportunity to kill this tank. Making him, you know, giving you some sort of an ability to play around him as well, I think, is the issue. And making him less brain dead, just walking there, shooting the enemy Mauga or the biggest enemy target because he needs to shoot them to keep doing damage. But the other change will sort of explain that as well. So then you've got incendiary and volatile chain guns. Now, the ammo is being decreased from 350 to 300. Now, I think he originally came into the game with 300 uh, ammo and then they increased it to 350 when he, he launched for competitive. But... This is great because, again, when Mauga's not shooting, it has a really detrimental effect on his survivability. Because you have to think of the way Mauga is. For most of the game, he's firing both chain guns point blank into the enemy tank. That is keeping him alive because he's getting his passive. Obviously, when he sets them on fire, he's then doing crit damage and he's healing himself off the crit damage effectively. So reducing the ammo means there's less time of that, which is a massive, massive survivability nerf to him, which is good. It also means he's going to reload more, so there'll be more, again, opportunities of like, oh, look, Mauga's lifting the chain guns up in the air, he's reloading. We can now push him, we can pressure him, because we know he doesn't have that self-sustain he used to have before. Good stuff, Blizzard. Then we get Cardiac Overdrive. So this is the ability you just pop and then laugh because you don't die. But basically, the lifesteal is being decreased from 70 to 60%. That's pretty big. And the cooldown is being increased from 10 to 12 seconds. So again, I agree with this. You might even be able to reduce the, the, the life still down to even 50% from this. But maybe that's borderline kind of making it useless. I don't know. But again, this is a good change. So good stuff, Blizzard. Really, I'm behind that. Good stuff. Then the ultimate. So cage fight, you no longer get infinite ammo. But it does reload your chain gun. So obviously, if you had 100 ammo left and then you pop the ultimate, you go straight back to max and then you can keep firing again. Again, this is good because the ultimate was the most brain-dead expression of Mauga gameplay. It was like, you can just fire forever now. So 
you probably won't die, provided you haven't trapped the whole enemy team in there with you and you don't have any healers. Um, but if you've got some healers helping you and you've trapped like just the enemy tank or whatever, you can just destroy them. You, you just don't need to reload. It was crazy. It was stupid. Absolutely brain dead. So again, I agree with that change. I think Mauga's ultimate anyway is a bit of a questionable ultimate. It's not not the not the most elegant ultimate really um, in the game. So, but yeah, but it's nerfed. This is good. Then Berserker, which is his passive over health conversion rate decreased from 60 to 50%. Again, this impacts his sustainability. This impacts how long his uptime is in a fight, basically, which I guess is the moral of this story. Less ammo, so less damage uptime. Less lifesteal from his passive and cardiac overdrive and all the rest of it, which just means less Malga. You know, he's not going to be as tanky as he was. So this is all good to see. The question will be, is this going to be enough to eradicate him from the meta of the game? Maybe. But we're going to have to wait and see because Anna's nade is also getting nerfed in this patch. And that basically was the counter to Amalgo was to make him purple and then kill him as fast as you can. Now you're going to have less time to kill him because he won't be purple for as long. But will it matter because he's all these other nerfs combined might just obliterate him into the gutter. Mm. Any Arissa fans out there? Because uh, Arissa gets buffed. <laughs> so <laughs> wait for this. Augmented Fusion Driver, the primary fire. Fall off damage penalty removed. So yeah, that is a massive buff to your primary fire. But then here's an interesting one. Because this is a buff against Mauga. I didn't know this was a thing. But Fortify is now immune to taking forced critical hit damage, such as Mauga's volatile chain gun damage, while Orisa is burning. Fortify already prevents direct critical damage from headshots. So it turns out all along, Mauga, when he was attacking a gold Orissa, would just, he'd be critting her. <laughs> so he'd be getting his lifesteal off her and he'd be critting her. Like, so no wonder she was just dying in front of him. So this is actually a pretty big buff against Mauga. So Orissa versus Mauga might be a lot better <laughs> than it was in the past, which is, well, yeah, it's really funky, isn't it? Mm. Roadhog gets a healing nerf. Now, Take a breather. The amount healed is being reduced from 500 to 450. The cooldown between uses is being increased from 1 to 1.5 seconds. So it's a healing, a self-healing nerf for Roadhog. Now this might be sort of um, a premeditated change, expecting him to maybe slot into the role that Malg has been occupying maybe. So they're trying to combat that before it becomes too dominant. I don't know, but... Yeah, it's a nerf to his, his healing output. So Roadhog just gets nerfed, which if you're a Roadhog hater, you'd probably love it. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Sojin because this is a this is just a... Ah, so in the UK, there was a gentleman called Luke Littler, 16 years old, a darts player. This took over the UK. Um, it was like he was a sensation. He made it to the final. His first ever, ever World Darts Championship. He gets to the final. He does lose in the final, unfortunately, but... Takes the world by storm. Now, you're probably thinking, Sty, why the hell are you telling me about darts? Because I think Blizzard have literally, every patch, they're like, I've got the darts, and they just throw it at a board, and whatever hero it lands on, they're just like, yeah, let's change that hero. And it's like Sojourn has got that. So, the, you won't believe what I'm about to say. So, Sojourn, Railgun, gradual energy decay no longer decreases below 25%. Gradual energy decay no longer decreases below 25%. So Sojin's going to have more railgun, and it's going to be easier to charge the railgun because you've got less decay. Sojin is basically the best DPS in the game right now. Yes, this was the Malga meta world where Sojin can just charge up off the big fat Malga and then just rail somebody in the background and just delete them from the game. Um, this makes a railgun stronger. It's really weird. Like, I don't think anyone was asking for a Sojin buff. I don't think... I, I've literally... You could probably do a massive comprehensive Google search. You would find nobody <laughs> asking for Sojin buffs, but she's getting one. It's very, very odd. And I don't know why they're doing this. I mean, you could say if you look at the tier list of DPS right now, Sojin's number one. Trace is actually pretty good. Um, Echo, really, really good. I mean, Echo kind of flying under the radar a little bit because if you clone the enemy Mauga, you just win that fight. That fight is over. Like two Maugas, Maugas versus one, it's over. You know, she's really, really strong. And she's quite good at burning tanks down when they get below 50% health as well uh, with a beam. So, yeah, she's pretty good. But honestly, guys, Sojin, why are we buffing Sojin? I really have no idea. But it's something Blizzard are doing. So it's the world that we need to live in.
Sombra gets some changes. Now, I'm, I'm going to kind of say these are like quality of life changes to Sombra. Um, you could might be saying they're teensy, teensy little buffs, but they're just going to make her feel more fluid. So, hack. Server update rate while channeling increased to improve responsiveness. Now, all this means is when it comes to things like server update rate, a very simplistic, like my simplistic understanding of this is it's essentially the poll rate. So like how fast your information is being sent and coming back from the server. If they increase the update rate, then so kind of like the tick rate, I guess you could say. Or maybe I'm even getting the two confused. Who knows? But basically they're increasing the rate of this so it will feel better. So when you're channeling, it will feel better. It'll feel more responsive and that will feel good. So yeah, that's fine. And now the stealth changes kind of, I think, go down the same route. So the grace period where stealth can be cancelled immediately after entering it is increased from 0.5 to 0.75 seconds. Cooldown now pauses at one second while capturing or contesting objectives from 1.5 seconds. Cooldown on respawning decreased from 1.5 to one second. So I think we could probably all agree they're just changes that make her feel more fluid. And I think that's fine. Right then, it's time to talk about Anna because they're nerfing the Anna bio nade and it's really simple on paper but will have huge ramifications in the game bio grenade effect duration reduced from 3.5 to 3 seconds it's only a 0.5 second reduction but this now means anna's nade isn't as effective as it was before so if you get hit with anti-nade you die tanks hate anti-nade it's the worst thing ever but obviously it's got a place in the game because i guess they can balance around it to some degree but whatever if you were to list the uh, entire Overwatch cast and say what hero would fit into every single team comp, it would be Anna. <laughs> now, it isn't just because of Bionade. Yeah, Bionade's a really good ability, but Anna's also got kind of like an infinite skill cap. If you're really good with accuracy and aiming, potentially your healing just increases and increases and your damage output increases as well. Sleep, predicting when to sleep and all of that stuff has a massive impact. Nano is probably the easiest thing to use in the whole kit. Just Nano the Genji and then watch him do no damage. <laughs> Actually, it's just Nano Malga. That's basically all you were doing uh, in the game at the moment until the Malga nerfs, that is. But yeah, why is this a big deal? I mean, it's funny because Malga is being nerfed, but also Malga is he's not being buffed. I don't want to sound like I'm being completely ridiculous here, but he will only be purple for three seconds now and not 3.5. So that's 0.5 less seconds you've got to kill him. Because obviously when he goes purple, you just kill him. Well, the question will be, is he dying within one second of being purple? Is he dying within two seconds of being purple? So does it really make any difference to Malga? Who really knows? Again, this is an issue with the sweet spot of Antinade because it's an ability where, let's say it only lasted for a second, which I think, oh, don't quote me on this, but I think there was might have been an experimental or something. But I'm sure they really reduced the Anna Nade cooldown. It might not have been one second. It might have been like one and a half seconds or even two seconds. But basically, it makes the nade feel terrible. Like, it makes it feel like it doesn't do anything. So you use it. Oh, well, I may as well have not used it. It's done nothing. Um, but then when it's 3.5 seconds and longer, it feels like it's doing too much. And it is an instant fight win button. So the question here will be, is three seconds the sweet spot? Does it still give players enough time to react? Um, or does it need to be lowered? Or is it too low? Does it need to be 3.25 seconds? Who knows? Really, really interesting, though, this is that they're actually looking at, at anti-nade. Really interesting stuff. Next up is Iliari. Now, I love this hero. I played this hero to death in the season she came out and never touched her again. This is because as soon as people realized, shoot the, uh, the healing totem, that was it. You lost basically 80% of your effectiveness because your healing of your alternate fire or your secondary fire was like so close range. It, it was hard to get a ton of value from that. You wanted your team to play around your totem. If they didn't, then, well, you had a problem anyway. But they are buffing her. And they're buffing her to give her a bit more damage, which is quite interesting. And they're buffing her ultimate. So this is what's happening. So for the solar rifle, primary fire gain is no longer paused by secondary fire. That's great. Nor channeling captive sun. That's also great. And the ammo has been increased from 14 to 16. That's also great. Captive Sun, which is the ultimate, now fully refills secondary fire resource and resets overheated status. Again, that's really good. And remove the damage fall off penalty on the Sunstruck explosion. So that's going to make it do more damage because there's no damage fall off on it now. This is great, right? This is the good changes. But I think the problem with Iliari is she is built around the healing totem. 
When the healing totem gets destroyed, you lose a ton of your effectiveness. If it's in the wrong place, you lose effectiveness. And I think it's just going to be an issue the hero's always going to have. So maybe what they're trying to do here is lean more into just being a, she's just a DPS support, really. Yeah, she can heal close range, but beyond that, she's just trying to do damage. Maybe that's the way Iliari gets played going forward. I don't know, but I think these are good changes. And honestly, I'm looking forward to playing them. Life Weaver gets two buffs. Now, these are these are actually pretty good. So, projectile speed on his primary fire, Thorn Volley, is being increased from 70 to 80 meters per second. This is massive. Like, 10 meters per second is a really big speed increase. So, he's going to feel like he's got, like, a little submachine gun now. It's going to feel really good to play. And Petal Platform gets a massive buff. Reinhardt players will hate this because it's now going to block your fire strike. So, Petal Platform no longer pierced by piercing projectiles yeah it, it is no longer pierced by fire strike or anything that would move through a barrier or well that is a piercing projectile fire strike is the best example because this is what i would do you'd see him on the pedal platform and you'd throw fire strikes through because you know the life weaver thinks he's safe he's not because fire strikes going through and maybe it kills him you hit him with both so it's it, yeah it's a big big buff pedal platform is now going to make life weaver feel really really safe so let's go over some hero bug fixes um, because I think these are worth discussing. So uh, there's just a general hero fix which fixed a bug that allowed abilities with shockwaves to hit targets in a floor below. Yeah. <laughs> Bastion uh, fixed an issue with Bastion's hitbox becoming desynchronized while in assault mode. Pretty big bug. Doomfist fixed a bug with rocket punch that could cause targets of the punch to potentially lose their walking animation. Now, I must say, Doomfist has got a absolute laundry list of bugs. Um, so there's probably another 500 bugs that need fixing for the hero, but whatever. Things like no regs, very common with like seismic slam as well. Oh, dear. Echo fixed a bug that occurred when Echo copied Sigma's kinetic grasp would not grow when taking damage. Iliari fixed a bug where the sunstruck effect wouldn't detonate if the damage threshold was reached in the last 0.6 seconds of the effect. And Mercy fixed an issue that reduced Guardian Angel's active duration by cancelling the ability while simultaneously pressing crouch or jump. Fixed an issue that forced Mercy to reload if Valkyrie was activated during the reload animation. And there are also some general bug fixes as well. So uh, they fixed a bug that caused endorsement levels to appear incorrectly in custom games. Increased the volume and clarity of ultimate voiceover lines. Fixed missing multi-kill voiceovers from activating when criteria is met. Fixed the rugby practice challenge not progressing. Fixed a bug when spectating that caused the camera to become stuck on two members of the team. Fixed an issue that prevented the hero limit option from saving after being modified in custom game options. Uh, fixed an issue uh, with the reticle options where dot size and outline thickness would change the reticle appearance even if their opacity was set to zero. <laughs> fixed a crash related to viewing replays. <laughs> fixed a bug that prevented you from being able to manually enter the value for maximum queue delay in streamer protect settings. This value could always be set using the, si uh, the slider even. So there we go. That is the, uh, the big Overwatch 2 mid-season balance patch. Now, the headline news here is Mauga is hopefully taken out of the meta. I think the secondary news is the nerf to Anna's nade, and then weirdly, this sort of buff to Sojourn, which I don't really understand why, but I guess they just wanted to buff a DPS hero, so they picked Sojourn. But Maug is the big question, isn't he? Because when we say things like Maug is bringing the game into disrepute and all these like superlatives and all this stuff, it's like, yeah, you know, it, it is a bit over the top. But Mauga, the issue with him is he really reduced the game down to just this very basic gameplay for the tanks. And tanks are already suffering in Overwatch. It's already a very sort of thankless role. It's already a frustrating role to play because you don't really feel like you're having much of a, you know, you can have an impact on gameplay. So it's not true that I say that you're not having an impact on gameplay. But often you can feel like sometimes you're just along for the ride and you just hope you've got supports that look after you. And you don't really care what your DPS do. You just hope your supports keep you alive. Obviously, Mauga has been the, the, the meta recently, and it's been terrible. Probably the worst meta in Overwatch's history. But it, it depends on your healers being the right healers and also looking after you. If you've got a Kiri and an Ana, you're rubbing your hands together thinking this is awesome, like good stuff. Because if they heal me and they Kiriko cl cleanses the anti-nade when I get hit by the enemy's Ana, I'm never going to die. And my Ana's going to anti-nade there, Mauga. I'm going to kill him. It's such a basic binary like gameplay loop. 
But then you go into a game and you might have a Lucio and a Zen or something, or a Lucio and a Moira. Well, it, there's going to be a problem then, because if the enemy team have got the Kiri and the Anna, then yeah, you're probably going to lose. But then that's when the issue gets more complex, doesn't it? And then we start talking about support. And there are things where support was even seen as, in fact, there was a lot of people talking about supports actually enjoyed the Malgo meta because you know, it, it was almost like a race against the enemy supports. Are you actually healing your tank enough? Um, are you using your anti-nade correctly? You know, your other abilities and stuff. So people do enjoy it, but that's the way this game goes. People enjoy metas, people don't like metas. But I think overall, the Malga meta has been pretty terrible. I think as a hero, his design, his kit is very just one dimensional. And I'm not really sure what they can do with him to make him viable. Because when I think he's viable, we end up with the hellish meta we've had to play through for the last... You know, how many weeks has it been? Three, four weeks of, of Malga. So, yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for listening and watching the video. If you've got anything you want to add, then do stick it in the comments below. I do read the comments below, by the way. <laughs> Somebody was like, I don't read the comments. And so I replied to him. I was like, yes, I do. Because I do. Um, it's actually a really cool page on the YouTube back end, which just shows you all of your comments from all of your videos. So if you're getting tons of comments, you can like just get them in one big stream. You don't have to load up individual videos which is really cool uh, but anyway i'll let you guys go and uh, get out there and tell me how malga is faring and uh yeah oh actually before i go if you've <clears throat> if you've lasted this long i'm gonna put a shout out for over analyzed replay codes now they have to be new because the patch is now um as of you guys watching this video so the, the old replays won't work but if you go to unitlost.com which is my website forward slash over analyzed there's a form and you could submit replays and fill in information i'm not promising anything here guys i just want to get some new replays in because i might start doing some testing and making some sort of um concepts for this show going forward and see if we can sort of bring it back because so i want to i want to start having an excitement you know with overwatch again because i still enjoy the game but yeah all right guys let me know what you think about that and i'll catch you lovely lot on the next video see you soon <laughs>